Well, no matter what's happened in life, there's no excuse to stop and park on our journey with God. There's still time for us to be all we can be for His glory. I hope today you'll be encouraged to move past any pain that has caused you to settle and not seek the fulfillment of your goals. And later we're going to chat with my special guest, Pastor John Gray, and discuss ways that we can move beyond pain and go after our goals. All right, how many of you see my sign? That's the title of my message tonight. <laughs> no parking at any time. Some of you have had your life in park for way too long. And it's time to get it out of park, put it in gear, and put Jesus in the driver's seat and get going. We're going to start with Genesis 11 and verse 32. And Terah took Abram, his son, Lot, the son of Haran, his grandson, and Sarai, his daughter-in-law, her son Abram's wife, and they went forth together to go from Ur of the Chaldees into the land of Canaan. But, now you know, that word always creates a problem. Always. You can see that they started out for somewhere, but when they came to Haran, they settled there. They settled. I've come to kind of despise that word because I think far too many people settle. They settle for a life that's so much less than what Jesus wants to give them. They settle for staying at a job that they can't stand just because they'll make a few more dollars there than they would if they went and did what they really loved. They have a dream for their life. They have a goal, and it gets a little tough. It gets a little hard, and so they settle. And how many women even settle for a guy that they know is not really right, but they're just kind of desperate and afraid they'll never have anybody, so... They get themselves into another mess that lasts for a lifetime because they didn't want to wait for the right thing. And I think it's time that we stop settling and we start going all the way through with God, all the way through to the place where we start out to go when we get started. Wouldn't it be kind of foolish if we started this conference and halfway through, decided, well, but, but it's been enough. We've worked hard enough this weekend. We just, we're, we're just going to settle right here and not finish the rest of it. You'd all think we were about half crazy, but yet people do that all the time in their lives. And then verse 32 says, and this is the part that I think is really important. And Terah lived 205 years, and Terah died in Haran. So actually, here's the thing that I've learned. He started out to go to Canaan, but he settled in Haran, and he died where he settled. <laughs> he died where he settled. Now, you might keep breathing, but if you settle for less than what's really in your heart, there's going to be something in you that's going to die. Something in your soul is going to sour and give up. Because we all, all of us, if you're a Christian, God has put a desire in you to not be mediocre, to be all you can be, to be excellent, and to do something worth doing other than just walking around the planet and just breathing and taking up space. Amen? But it takes a little bit of courage, doesn't it? He died where he settled. Years ago, when I was first, well, really, at that time, all I had was a home Bible study in my home. And um, I was getting ready to go look to a little, it wasn't a Bible college thing, but it was a three-night-a-week thing at my church where you, we were going to learn more about the Bible. They call it the Elijah program. And um, 
Somehow, somewhere during that time, I got really tired and worn out. We had kids and we're trying to do all this stuff. And one night I had a dream and I dreamed that I was driving in my car and I saw a bridge up ahead and there was a little bit of water covering the bridge. It wasn't a lot of deep water, but it was, it was some water that was going to make it a little bit difficult to drive through. And I noticed that people were, some were turning around, going back in the other direction. A lot of people were pulling off to the side and parked. And so I pulled off to the side and parked and I kept, in my dream, I would look at the bridge and the water and then I'd look behind me and then I'd look at the bridge and then I'd look behind me. And I was trying to make a decision about whether to go on or to turn back. And when I woke up, immediately, God showed me what the dream meant. He said, in life and on this journey that I've called you on, there's going to be lots of places in the road where you can pull off to the side and park. But you can also decide to go all the way through and finish your journey. And I'm going to tell you, some of you have pulled off to the side of the road of life and you have parked somewhere. It's time for you to get it in gear and get going again. Because God gives dreams and he doesn't take them back. They're still there waiting for you. There's still time for you to be all you can be, the best person that you can be, the greatest person that you can be. And you can do that for God's glory. Amen. Now, God promises us healing and restoration. And we're going to talk a fair amount about that this weekend. You know, we cannot always avoid the pain that wounds us, but we can choose to not let it ruin the remainder of our lives. Many people in here have been hurt, some very badly, and some of you have done some really bad things in your life. And I think that a lot of times people park at the point of their pain. How many people get hurt by their parents and they never really ever get over that? You might have somebody who was adopted. For whatever reason, their parents didn't want them. They weren't able to keep them. Or let's, let's just take it to the extreme. They didn't want them. They didn't want them. And they can spend their whole entire life, whole life, trying to recover from that. And many of you know Chris Kane's story, and you know, I don't want to get into whatever she might be going to share in her messages, but even if I do, she'll share it better than me. You know, she found out when she was, what, 30? 33 that she was adopted. She never knew that. And make a long story short, she finally got a hold of her birth certificate, and her birth certificate said unwanted and unnamed unwanted and unnamed and look at her now look at what she's doing now look at her <clears throat> she didn't park at the point of her pain my father sexually abused me for as many years as I could possibly remember I didn't park at the point of my pain I decided I was going to go ahead and have a life I remember meeting a woman in a restaurant in Utah and uh Soon as she saw me and recognized me, she wanted to tell me her story. And so she's telling me how bad things are and how bad things have been. And she said, I'll tell you, Joyce, life has just thrown me under the bus. I said, you know what? It did me too, but I decided to drive it. <laughs> Come on. I mean, it's time to shake some of this stuff off. It's time to stop just living your life with a chip on your shoulder, acting like everybody owes you something because you went through some pain. There's no doubt if you've been hurt, you are owed something. But I'll tell you what, God is the only person that can pay you back. Nobody else can. And as long as you're trying to collect from the wrong people, you are going to be miserable and stay miserable. God is in the business of healing and restoration. Your entire life does not have to be ruined 
because somebody hurt you way back when or last week or last night or and even if you did some terrible things there are people sitting in here tonight and I'm sure people watching my TV that like Miss Shepherd you you've done something wrong and you're hiding it you're hiding from it maybe you didn't hit somebody with your van and run off but it, it could have you, you maybe maybe you hurt somebody maybe you're in prostitution Maybe you had several abortions and now you wish that you wouldn't have done that. You know, regret is pretty much useless. We can be sorry for the things that we've done, but then we need to receive our forgiveness and we need to go on. I mean, living with regret will just suck the life right out of you. Amen? And if you've done wrong things in the past and you're still holding that against yourself, it's time for you to say, I am going to shake that off. I am going to, you know, when I think about sometimes the things that were done to me when I was a child, to be honest, at this point, I feel like I'm thinking about somebody that I used to know a long, long time ago. It's like that's, that's so much not me anymore. I don't sit around. I mean, now sometimes it'll come back to my mind and I have to decide, nope, been there, done that, not going back there. But you, you have to make decisions. You can't just go by what you feel all the time. God promises to heal and restore. This is such a great scripture. For I will restore health to you and I will heal your wounds, says the Lord. Because they, you know, uh, let's stop for a minute and talk about they. <laughs> it, it is amazing how much value we put on what they think and what they say and what they do. And one day several years ago, I got to thinking, who are they? We let them run our life and we don't even know who they are. They have called you an outcast. It doesn't matter what they call you, it's what God calls you that matters. <laughs> Saying, this is Zion whom no one seeks after and for whom no one cares. I love Psalm 2710, even though my mother and father have forsaken me, the Lord will take me up and adopt me as his own child. Hallelujah. Acts 9, 34. And Peter said to him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, now makes you whole. I love the little amplification that the Amplified Bible puts in places like this. He does it now. And I want to say to you tonight, the Lord Jesus Christ now makes you whole. You don't have to go home full of holes bleeding anymore. Tonight, you can make a decision to receive God's love and healing and restoration and you can go home whole. You don't have to stay parked at the point of your pain and ruin the rest of your life. Well, I'm getting ready to say something and I want you to make your mind up before I say it that you're going to believe it. So here it comes. Jesus wants to make you whole and he wants to do it starting right now. Choose to receive his love, his healing, and his restoration. Don't stay parked in your pain and settle for less than the best that God has for your life. Today, I have a special guest, Pastor John Gray, and together, we want to encourage you to never settle or allow any pain to prevent you from moving on. Pastor Gray will also be with us at the Women's Conference this year as one of our guest speakers, and we are excited to have him back. Well... Pastor John. Mama Joyce. Okay, you know, the thought that comes to me is I think a lot of people maybe look at people that they think are successful, mm -hmm. and uh, which would be you, of course. Oh, well, and uh, they think, well, you know, that guy's never had any problems. He's, <laughs> his, his life's been great, or boy, you know, they already know my life hasn't been great because I tell all all the time. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to know a little bit about uh, how many opportunities you've had in life to settle and not go on and be the John Gray God wants you to be. Uh, where, where do I start? <laughs> I think um, 
the enemy always attempts to break up the family. Yeah. Because that was the first thing that we're introduced to in the Bible is, you know, Adam, Eve, mm -hmm. their children, and the enemy immediately seeks to break up, starting with the marriage and right. then with the children. Um, and our family was no different. My mom and dad divorced when I was about four years old, somewhere in there, about four and a half. And it wasn't long after he left that I uh, was a victim of sexual abuse, not at the hands. family member, but that impacted me tremendously. I didn't know yeah. what had happened. I didn't know how to process it. Yeah. And I didn't share that for about 15 years because yeah. you don't even know what you're dealing with. Right. But in that moment, I saw where not having a covering, not having a father present mm -hmm. could have very easily been the beginning of me making excuses right. for not trying to uh, not only achieve goals, but to serve God. The idea of a heavenly father mm -hmm. is very difficult for someone when your earthly father right. has not done what they need to do. Right. And so thank God I had a mother strong in prayer, strong in the word, who lived a life of uh, Christ likeness in front of me. And so she wouldn't allow the excuse of not having a father to be a reason why I started uh, exhibiting negative behaviors. She was like, you are going to serve God. Uh, you're going to be a man of integrity. You're going to be a virgin when you get married. You're going to, I mean, she was speaking all of these things and I'm like, mom, I'm like 12. I'm unattractive. I've got buck teeth. <laughs> Nobody wants me. You can calm down. <laughs> but these, these moments that, that come to interrupt, um, you know, we can't get caught up in the comma. That's what I yeah, say. That's good. You know, some things look like exclamation points, but they're really commas. Right. Not having a father seemed like an exclamation point. But through Jesus, it became a comma. Right. He has the power to change it. Uh, moments where I lost loved ones. Um, my grandmother 
who was the matriarch of our family, who who spoke things about me when I was one and two years old that are coming to pass right now in my life, this yeah. level of prophetic voice. When she, she died of brain cancer, I said, God, I prayed. You know, yeah, you didn't answer right. my prayer. Well, I'm mad at you. I don't think I want to <laughs> serve you. And that's how close we are. Like I say, dumb stuff, and he still loves me. I'm like, I'm not. I'm Don't not you imagine you. God is so impressed when we tell him we're mad at him? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, th- I think he gets tickled because now that I have a son and he gets mad at me, he says, Daddy, I'm mad at you. Yeah. <laughs> and then three seconds later, he's like, I love you. Yeah. And that's me. Yeah. And I think my Heavenly Father understands who I am at my core, and there are moments where I felt like giving up, sitting on the sidelines, having, having dealt with loss, the loss of my best friend. I held his hand when he took his last breath. Yeah. And I said, God, I'm never going to let anybody get this close to me again. Yeah. And God says, you got to be careful of your words because those times of, of intimacy and relationship uh, and the developing of those relationships is something that God doesn't want me to run from because loss is just a part of life. Right. But when you know who you are in Christ yeah. and when you know where these people are going, you get excited and say one day, hopefully not soon, but one day I'll be there. Yeah. And, uh, but there, there were moments when the pain was so great that I wanted to quit, wanted to give up. What about the pain of rejection? Did you oh. experience that? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I, I was not the lady. growing up in high school and all of that stuff. And uh, I, there were moments when I wanted to, you know, experience all of the dating stuff. But my mother was somewhere praying and, you know, <laughs> praying the wrong people away. And just there were times when she literally, I remember one time she told a young lady, she said, you're very nice, but you're not what I prayed for. <laughs> I'm like, well, that ruined this date. So, yeah. <laughs> um, but there were moments where you'd write the note. Do you like me? Check yes or no. Mm-hmm. Of course, it would be a big X on the no. Like, did right. you mean yes yeah. accidentally? Yeah. But the moments of rejection were actually God protecting me. What looked like rejection then was really protection. Right. Because what I didn't know was that God is able to see around the bend. Right. And the moments when I'm like, God, how come I can't go and do what everybody else is doing? And my mom's always praying and I'm always in church and I'm always right. leading the choir. How come I can't be out there? Because I've been set apart. Right. I didn't know it then. Yeah. Who knew I'd be sitting at this moment with you, knowing that um, what you've meant and how your teaching and how the Lord has used you has impacted me for me to be sitting here is a miracle and a dream because the young men in my community who don't have a father who who ha- come up with a single mother, mm-hmm. they don't have the same testimony as me. Historically and disproportionately, they don't get a chance to achieve their right. dreams. But I've been able, by the grace of God, in those moments of pain and loss, in those moments where I was rejected, mm-hmm. not just by girls, yeah. but I'm talking about being rejected by people who didn't see my gifts, right. didn't see yeah. a calling on me. But the Lord did. People can always find something wrong with you, can't they? Oh, my goodness. It's amazing how many, just all the different things the enemy uses. And, you know, of course, I was abused in my past. And when I began to teach the word, it was very, like, not popular for women to Mm -hmm. be doing that.
So I got asked to leave my church. I lost my friends. I mean, there was a lot of pain and rejection along the way. And we're really wanting to encourage people today that, you know, what happened in your past can be the reason why you are the way you are, but you can't let it become an excuse. Yes. To park at the point of your pain and just stay there. You know, when you think about biblical models for what you just said, I think of David, Second mm -hmm. Samuel, right. the prophet shows up and says, are all the young men here? Jesse's like, well, there remains yet yeah, the youngest. Right. Yeah. He's outside. You, know, you don't want him. <laughs> you don't even want to see him. So here we see a story, a picture of a father who was so blind that he didn't even see that there was a king in his house. Right, yeah. There yeah. are people who are even close to us who don't see our gifts or our calling, but that rejection actually seeds a humility in us. Mm -hmm. For those of us who have, who have dealt with that, right. we have a different grace. Mm -hmm. When you have been rejected, when you've been marginalized and overlooked, you have a different grace for other people. I think God allows the rejection to seed grace in us so that we're... a little softer. Absolutely. And, and that is what I learned when, when moments where I wanted to be embraced, when mm -hmm. I wanted a leader to take me under their wing. Yeah. But I'm, and then they didn't. And I'm like, well, Lord, I guess it's just me and you. And he said, that's what I wanted all along. Yeah, I'm, I'm a firm believer that everything that we go through in life, it doesn't mean that God did it. It doesn't mean he arranged for it. He's a good father. But he does use those things <clears throat> to give us experience. Yes. And I think that's a very important word. Experience that then equips us for the thing that he wants us to do. Yes. And so the big thing that we want people to hear today is don't park at the point of your pain. Don't let what has happened to you control your destiny. And maybe some people today just need to have a little more fire stirred up on the inside of them to say, I'm not going to just, you know, if the enemy's already hurt you, then don't let him continue to hurt you right. by not living the life that you were meant to live. And it's never too late to begin right now. I love that. There's, it's never too late to begin right now or to begin again. Right. Because many of us... Because of the pain, we try something, and when it doesn't work out right away, yeah. we give up. But I love that Jesus, to me, is not just the power of the resurrection. He is the power of again, yeah. that we can begin again, that we can start again, that we can start afresh and anew. And I think even for my life, looking at the places where the enemy attempted to hijack, right. and we use the scripture, no weapon formed against us shall prosper, there have been times when I'm like, God, it really hurts. I'm really, why did you let the enemy hit yeah, me? Right. And he said it didn't prosper. Yeah. I didn't say it wouldn't hurt you. I just yeah. said it wouldn't prosper. Yeah. And the enemy's job is to steal, kill, and destroy. But if you're still alive, then you need to have an excitement and a holy indignation towards the enemy right. that you're going to live the life that God intended for you to live, as you said. And for me, that passion, that drive every morning is, I didn't have a father there. Yes, I dealt with abuse. Yes, I've lost loved one. Yes, there were times when I was rejected by leaders and by right. people that I wanted to embrace right. me, and none of it has stopped me. 
because I had a heavenly father that was determined to get me to destiny if I held on to his hand That's perfect. and I walked through the open door. Thank you so much, John. We're really looking forward to you sharing at our conference this year. You know, you can hear more of this kind of good stuff if you come to the conference this year, and I believe it's really going to bless you. The bottom line of what we want you to know today is there's no pit so deep that God cannot reach down in it and lift you out. And yes, I'm talking to you. I think so often people hear things like this and they always think, well, that might work for somebody else, but it's not going to work for me. But it will work for you because God is no respecter of persons. If we will follow... his guidelines that he lays out in his word, we can recover from absolutely anything. There's nothing you can't recover from. So I'm asking you today, don't just stay parked at something that hurt you, a disappointment you had, even something that you might consider a failure. You know, I love what John Maxwell says, we need to learn how to fail forward. And I don't really think there is any such thing as failing as long as you're willing to keep putting one foot in front of the other one and going forward. You may make mistakes, but you don't fail unless you completely give up. And we don't want you to do that. Good things are in store for you. Today, we're offering you the Word of God. I know you're shocked because I do that every day, but the Word of God... what has changed my life, John's life, and I believe it has the power. Now, I know it has the power to change your life, but you need to read good word-filled books, and you need to listen to good CDs and watch good DVDs, and you got to get the stuff in you for it to do you any good. So today, we're offering you eight teachings on CD. It's called The Path to God's Purpose. There's teaching from myself, from John, from Chris Kane, from other guests that we had at our conference last year, you are going to love, 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 love it. 
So do yourself a favor and take advantage of this offer today and do it right away. Thanks for being with us today. We sure love you, and we are excited about what God wants to do in your life. Discover God's tailor-made destiny for your life when you order Joyce's teaching series, The Path to God's Purpose. In this special series, hear Joyce's powerful messages from the 2016 Love Life Women's Conference and hear from her special guests, John Gray, Christine Kane, and Beth Moore. Also included is a special session where Joyce, Beth, and Christine all answered personal questions from the audience. This eight-teaching CD set can be yours for a gift of $35 or more. And for your gift today of $85 or more, we'll also include a ticket to this year's Love Life Women's Conference. So awesome to, like, worship with so many thousands of women. The whole conference so far has been very, very inspirational. I love that. Yeah. I love everything about tonight, and I look forward to the rest of the conference. I cannot wait. Ladies, don't miss out on this exciting offer. So contact us right now for either offer, 1-800-727-9673. Or visit us at JoyceMeyer.org. Good food, good mood, blood and circulation One step at a time, yeah that's how you make it Set a goal you control and the steps you take them I try to pick one thought, have some concentration And if I make a mistake, it's called education I try to do this every day, call it replication Wake up, today's gonna be a good day 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 Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Every different season, yo Sometimes I'm high, other times I'm barely breathing, though I like always gotta fight and hide from the demons, yo Negative thoughts are poison, they ride, uh Head full of flaws, so here come the clouds, uh They'll never stop unless I can swap All the bad for the good in my head when I'm lost, uh yeah, so I'ma fake it till I make it Positive thoughts are overtaken, I got patience One day at a time is how you operate a cadence A flow, you grow, you show yourself a foundation Stay away from all the shit that causes temptation I know that I like to do it cause it's sensation I live my life in my head like a narration Don't expect greatness, do my best, man, I'll take it Wake up, today's gonna be a good day Wake up Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. 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 